Guess who's back? No! How are all of you wonderful people doing in this wonderful week of February? My name is Levi Peters, and this is Levi Explains on Am I Gardener Season 2. Uh-huh. You know, it feels really good to be back, and I missed you all. I miss every single one of you people. Have you noticed, whenever you eat a pepper, we always, a chili pepper at least, a hot pepper, we always say, oh, gee, that, that's hot. You know, it burns. But the weird thing is, if you think about it, it's not temperature. It doesn't, it's not like when you touch it, you know, you, you burn your skin off. It has a weird sensation that we describe as hot and burning, but it's something totally different. Why is that? That's what we're talking about today, and that's what I'm going to explain to you. Why peppers are hot, all right? You know, I think the best way to explain this, though, is to dissect the pepper and eat it. Let's go. So what makes the pepper hot exactly? Well, we must first, before we get into anything else, define our terms. So hot is the more colloquial way of referring to the certain heat that we feel when we eat a really hot pepper. But in the scientific community, the term is pungency. Pungency is not hot and it's not spicy. So for example, if you have uh, pumpkin pie, okay, it can be hot temperature wise, right? Like if it came out of the oven and it can be spicy because of the spices in it, but neither of those mean pungency. So what actually makes a pepper spicy or pungent is capsaicin. And it's an irritant for mammals that gives off the sensation of burning anything that it comes in contact with. It's colorless and hydrophobic. What a bigot. And you know what? It's only found in peppers. That's where you're gonna find it. Just peppers. So if I chop up this cubanelle right here, we can actually see what's going on inside. Now this isn't really that hot, okay? There's pretty much no heat in this, but it's still a pepper. So we can look inside and see exactly what's going on in here. And you can see the placental tissue all where the seeds are located. And that's where the majority of the capsaicin is actually located. But it's also located on the ridges and the edges here and also including the skin. Not as much though. It's this area right here that holds the seeds. The seeds themselves don't have any capsaicin, but the white pith on the inner wall right here where the seeds are located, that's where, like I said, most of this stuff is located. So if you are taking part in a hot pepper eating contest, a tip is don't eat this area. But actually do, otherwise you'll look really lame. But the amazing thing about this is how intentional this all is in its placement and its purpose. Birds aren't affected by capsaicin. So when they eat the seeds, they don't break them. They just slip right through them, past their digestive system, and then they germinate. But with mammals, they have molar teeth. So it would actually damage the seeds, and so they wouldn't germinate. But capsaicin affects mammals. So it's a natural deterrent. So to stop the mammals from ruining it and, you know, destroying it, it basically the capsaicin says, <laughs> no way, buddy. This is for the birds. You play with fire, you're going to get burned. Pretty clever for a pepper. It's also antifungal and actually deters a certain fungus that normally infects chili peppers. Double wow. Funny though, it didn't work really well with humans because a lot of us, we eat this stuff up like candy and the pain actually can release endorphins. Oops. But as you know, some peppers are way hotter than others. But lucky for us, we invented a scale that helps us determine the pungency or the heat of hot peppers. It's called the Scoville scale. This scale is based on Scoville heat units or SHU and it's based on the concentration of capsaicinoids and the main component being capsaicin. Get it? Now a bell pepper has 0 to 100 Scoville units. Uh, Cubanel has 100 to 1000, okay? And jalapenos have about 3,500 to 8,000 Scoville units. But that's nothing because serranos have 10 to 23,000 SHU. And that's not even a lot because habaneros have 100 to 350,000 Scoville heat units. 
And that is painful, I'll tell you that much. My brother and I used to grow habaneros and eat them raw. I don't know why. But that wasn't the hottest pepper we ever ate, actually. We had a hot pepper eating contest years ago at my place. And we had there the second hottest pepper in the world. The Trinidad Scorpion. And that is at a whopping 1.2 million Scoville heat units. And I just... Just nipped the tip and my tongue almost fell off. The other guys who ate the entire pepper ended up throwing up in the streets. Anyhow, the current official record is the Carolina Reaper at a whopping 1.5 million SHUs. And the unofficial record for the hottest pepper is Pepper X at over 3 million. So there you have it. That's what makes peppers hot. And now, the next time when someone hands you a hot pepper like a habanero, now you know what you're in for and what to avoid. A seed area, hint, hint. Um, and with that being said, you know what? I actually bought some habaneros. It's been, I think, a few years since I had one and my tolerance has gone lower, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs>